Welcome back to the Comic Lounge. My name's Ryan, and today I'm going to be going through Eastman and Laird's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the Artisan Edition. Now, anybody that knows me knows I am a huge Ninja Turtles fan. Going back to the cartoon from the 80s, that's how I first discovered them. Obviously, I was born in 87, so the cartoon came out right around the time I was born, and that's probably my earliest memories. My first movie was a Ninja Turtles movie. When, and then as I got older, you know, I, I mean, I did. I read the Archie Ninja Turtles comic books based on the show. But when I was a, as I w entered my teen years, I discovered that they were actually they actually started as a comic book in 1984. And they were nothing like what we knew them from the cartoon. They were violent. I read about it and like instantly, you know, from there, I I found a, a reprint of the first issue went on to pretty much have a complete run of all the Ninja Turtles comics. I have the complete volume one, volume two I'm working on, volume three I don't have, almost have all volume, volume four, and then the current IDW series, obviously, which is the fifth volume. I have every issue of that. And I recently discovered that there was this artisan edition of the first issue where it has all the different steps that this book took before it, we get the actual completed version. I mean, even on this cover, you can see the whiteout that was used on some of the buildings, on some of this. I'm not exactly sure what that technique was used for. I, I flipped through this book, and it is a must for all Turtles fans. Let me get into it. I'll, I'll flip, show you guys what this book's all about, and hopefully, you know, this entices you to pick it up. So right off the bat, we get a, a close-up of on one of the interior pages, and we see right here, one of the turtles is coming up from the sewers. And I have to say, IDW has done a fantastic job with their artist editions that they do, or artisan editions also. And they've done a great job with the TMNT franchise. So right here it tells you that this is going to show showcase the artistic process that went into producing the first issue of TMNT by Eastman Laird, from layouts to inks to the final ready to... And this is the cover of... Ninja, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one scan from the original art. And I can't even tell you guys how fucking awesome this looks. It is so dope to see these. Never thought I'd be, you know, I never thought I'd be able to actually see these pages. And that's the awesome thing about artist editions is that they scan from the original art and will produce it in the same size as well. When this came out, this was the 33rd anniversary of the, team, of the Ninja Turtles. And it gives, you know, just a brief little backstory on the Turtles about how Eastman and Laird came together, who they, you know, some of their influences, one of them being Jack Kirby was one of their main influences. Frank Miller and Jack Kirby, I, I would say, are the two of the biggest influences in this book. You know, you go from mutant animals from like Jack Kirby's stuff that he did in Commandy, ninjas and stuff from Frank Miller's Daredevil and Ronin. While this could be looked at as kind of like campy and stuff, you know, like back then you're like, oh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, right? But you could, ne you never would expect it, I don't think, even if I had picked this up off the stands, that it would be something like so violent and, and such. But it is absolutely, I mean, that's a good thing too about IDW, like I was saying, is they've reprinted pretty much the entirety of the Ninja Turtles stuff going back to that first volume. And here we have the... Issue one layouts, and this was scanned, like I said, from original art. You can even see like the, the edges of the pages are dirty. Right here, a little note. Do all very Ronin. Just rough, rough layouts. Opening pages of the Ninja Turtles. And for their first comic produced, I mean, it's amazing the, the talent that these two had and the collaboration. Coming together to you know self publish this comic and and it turned into a um, like millions and millions of dollar franchise that's still resonant to this day. And just you know, able to get across this 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 origin story in one issue, so much happens, and it is an oversized issue. It's not like your regular a uh, thirty two page comic, but they introduce us to all the characters so quickly. I don't see how you don't immediately like just get sucked into this world and you immediately become like attached to the turtles. This story of, of redemption, of revenge against Orokusaki, who is the, 
the shredder it splinter sets the you know he raises the turtles after he scoops them up in the sewer everybody knows the story and sets them against him in the foot of the turtles uh origin meeting them leonardo michelangelo donatello Raphael. single page image of raf on the rooftops i mean this is just amazing stuff like i said i mean these are layouts but these are like like pretty detailed layouts for the most part. I mean, they pretty much have what they want to do and this doesn't change uh, very much going into the finished product. Even lettering in the layouts to have the dialogue so that they have dialogue placement. So going to the second part of the book, we have the inks and these are photocopies scanned from Kevin Eastman's personal archives. So this is before they did um, the duo tones on here, I believe, because, you know, this is definitely a lot different than flip to, you know, just, you can see the duo tone work right here, much different than what we just see with the straight um, inks to the page. Phenomenal how, how clean these scans are, able to tell action so well, so, so violent and stuff. I mean, I mean, this is the book that set off the black and white boom as well. Like, this book is not was not produced in color. This is black and white, like I said, with the duo tones. Interesting how much different this looks before they add that duo tone technique to it. Phenomenal. Very verbose throughout this. That, that is something that I would say they are not as much going forward. But the first issue, they like, I mean, they are giving you a lot of information, but there is a lot to read for sure in this. Again, like I said, you know, that one did change. We, we had Raph looking more directly at the reader. So, you know, the layouts for the most part stayed the same, but we do see some, some little changes from their original layouts to the inked product. Love this, fighting the foot. And a lot, a lot of this, I would say too, was very more influential on that original Ninja Turtle movie from 1990, uh, more so than the comic book. The comic book obviously could, couldn't have their characters bloody and the 1990 movie, even as a kid watching the cartoon, you know, like even that was like, Whoa, this is a little bit darker, but like I, as a kid couldn't even have imagined this and being able to discover this was almost like rediscovering them for the first time. And then as we go into part three, this is the final published version of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles one with the duo shade tones added. And again, this is scanned from original art and printed here at actual size. So you'll notice this. Uh, well, you may not be able to see this on camera, but some of the other artist editions that I that I have that I you know that I've done on the channel are a little bit bigger on eleven by seventeen. I'm not quite sure what the dimensions are of this paper, but they are working on a smaller paper. And the duotone, you know, as you can see, kind of lets them play in, within the black and white to where it's not just straight black and white like this. You know, it kind of give you, gives you different shades of stuff. Mess with, like, lighting and, as well on the characters. It's just so crazy to think that this was... This is how they came out. They came out swinging with their first book, you know? For it to be so successful, go through so many different printings, it's just amazing, amazing success story. And that's another thing that's kind of cool. Like if you do have those original uh, issues or even some of the, you know, maybe later printings of number one, they, they have their like editorials that they write. And as their like success is climbing and stuff, you, you kind of read along with them. And that's just very inspirational. Love the I love the design of Shredder too. I you know I, I can't talk about that enough. Again, this is one of the my favorite pages from the book. And I think it's funny too. I you know I haven't mentioned the turtles all have this like same like scowl, right? They all look the same except you see you see Leo with his mouth open there. But for the most part, the turtles are all drawn like that for quite some time, where it's just like that same look to their face. And the last part of the book is sampling of some very early sketches, designs, promotional materials by Eastman and Laird. This is for the Portsmouth, New Hampshire Minicon. There, this is the advertisement 
for a, a con where they would premiere Ninja Turtles number one. This is an early mail order advertisement for issue one. 40 page first issue for only $2. Man, whoever had, <laughs> whoever bought that for two bucks, man, they came up because it's, I even like the design of the turtles where you have, within the turtles logo, you have Leonardo with the, with his katana and there's blood dripping off from their first appearance in San Diego. Early character model sheets done by them. You notice a little bit of the difference, especially with their bandanas over the eye. The mouth is done a little bit differently. Inside front cover art from issue one. I like that. Dedicated to Jack Kirby and Frank Miller. The first sketch of page one from issue one. The artisan edition of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one. If you haven't, if you if you are a fan of the Ninja Turtles, definitely pick this up. Um, like I said, there's def I'm a huge fan, and there's definitely going to be some more Ninja Turtles coverage on this channel. And if you're not already following us, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at the Comic Lounge. Throw your comments or suggestions down below, or you can email us the Comic Lounge Pod at gmail.com. And make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video goes up. And we also have some of these episodes in audio form with our, our audio podcast, which is on Podbean, Spotify, or iTunes. And on that note, I'm out.